السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We mentioned uh, in the last halqa about the seerah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about Uqba ibn, Mu- ibn Abi Mu'ayt, one of the very bad, the worst disbelievers at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, the kuffar, the people of uh, Quraysh, they tried with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Okay. The people of Quraysh, they tried with the Prophet وسلم, by trying to give the Prophet وسلم, offers. We'll give you money, money, we'll give you women, we'll give you this and this. And when this did not work with the Prophet وسلم, they tried to threaten the Prophet وسلم. They tried all the ways to stop our Prophet Muhammad وسلم. And of course the Prophet وسلم, cannot stop because this is not... His, his, his choice. This is a message from Allah. He is the messenger of Allah. He is Rasulullah. Whatever you give me, whatever you do with me, I will not stop. If Allah tells me to stop, then I will stop. When the Allah told the Prophet وسلم, leave Mecca and go to Medina, the Prophet وسلم, left Mecca and he went to Medina. So the Prophet ﷺ cannot take his own decision by himself. He is waiting the wahi, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There, there is hadith when the Prophet ﷺ was reciting Surah Al-Najm. At the end of the surah, there is sajda. At the end of the surah, there is sajda, Surah Al-Najm. أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ so this is sajda. As you know in the Quran, if you open the Mus'haf, you will find in our Masahif, for example here in Kuwait, in Saudi, and many Muslim countries, you will find how many sajda in the Quran. What do I mean by sajda? You will find a line on the verse, okay, and this is a sign to make sujood. You do sajda, one sajda. Okay, how many sujood in the Quran? What is famous? 15, one five. What is famous? 15. Okay, there are different opinions, but what is famous now among us here in Kuwait, there are 15 sujood. The first one in Surah Al-A'raf, and the last one in Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. One of them in Surah Al-Najm. One of them in Surah Al-Najm. At the end when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited Surah Al-Najm, he was in Mecca. So everyone did sujood. Everyone did sujood. Muslims and non-Muslims. Muslims and non-Muslims. They did sujood, subhanallah. Except one man, a non-Muslim man, he did not like to put his head on the ground, so he took some soil and he put it on his forehead. And he said, yakfini hada, this is enough for me. It means no need to prostrate, to fall in prostration position. In this incident, there is something famous, which is called, there is a story, it is called قصة الغرانيق قصة الغرانيق Okay Now what is the authentic hadith? The authentic hadith that the Prophet ﷺ recited the end of Surah Al-Najm أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِلِينَ فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُونَ Make sujood for Allah Then everyone made sujood except this man So this is the authentic hadith There is a famous a story, as I said, it's called Qissat al-Gharaniq. 
اوكي ان صوره النجم افرايتم اللات والعزى ومناه الثالثه الاخرى تلك هي الغرانيق العلا وان شفاعته وان شفاعتهن لترتجى طيب there is hadith that when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reciting surah an-najm afaraitum al-lat wal-'uzza wa manah al-lat wal-'uzza wa manah these are three main idols for the mushriks so they claim in this narration that the shaytan added something in the quran he showed people that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was re- reciting تلك هي الغرانيق العلا وان شفاعتهن لا ترتجى these are the, the good idols or these are the good people or the good things اللات ومنات اللات والعزى ومناه وان شفاعتهن لا ترتجى and their intercessions are accepted so when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited these ayat the mushriks became happy and they made sujood with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but this narration is not authentic this is not authentic narration yes it is famous you maybe you will find this narration in many books but this is not authentic as ibn kathir rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that this is all the narrations are uh, i mean uh, all the chains for this story are not connected chains because for the hadith to be accepted the chain of the hadith the chain of narrations should be connected طيب so ibn kathir said all the chains for this hadith are not authentic not connected so this story is not authentic طيب so please please brothers and sisters we have to be careful this is one of the narration one of the narrations which is famous and not authentic because also logically this is not not accepted why because we should not accept that allah will allow for the shaytan to add something in the quran allah says in the, in the quran inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun it means the quran is protected by allah so we should not accept this narration because in this narration there is accusation for the quran that the shaytan had the chance to add something in the quran so the chain of this narration is not authentic and also the meaning of this narration is wrong totally wrong uh, meaning so please again brothers and sisters we have to be careful about these narrations and we should not accept like these uh, narrations طيب and uh, there is uh, another narration about the same hadith or this uh, the narration and mission also correct authentic in bukhari the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made sujood when he recited surah an-najm the muslims also mushriks and also the jinn the jinn made sujood with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this narration in in bukhari this narration in bukhari uh, that the jinn also made sujood with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay maybe someone ask okay why the mushriks did sujood with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam exactly allah wa'lam they mention the yani some reasons why the mushriks did sujood okay but allah wa'lam why طيب but what we are sure about that it is mentioned in hadith sahih in bukhari it is in sahih uh, al bukhari طيب then after that aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha said the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said uritu dar hijratikum that that nakhl bayna labatayn the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said i was shown the place where we will migrate to it is a place is a place is full of Nakhl. Nakhl means the palm tree from where we can get the dates. 
طيب بين لعبتين Okay, so it is full of palm trees, which is Medina. Which is Medina. طيب. So then after that, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the Muslims, now it is the time you can go to Medina, to migrate to Medina. Because at the beginning, he told them where to go. Habasha to Ethiopia. Habasha. But later, the Prophet ﷺ told them, خلاص, now the hijrah should be toward al Medina. So some of the Muslims came back from al Habasha to Mecca, then to al Medina, or to al Medina directly. So this is the place where the Muslims started to migrate. And at the beginning, the Prophet ﷺ did not migrate. Why? Because he's, he was waiting. He was waiting to get the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abu Bakr, Told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah, should I, should I leave? I want to migrate because this is a kind of worship. This is a kind of worship when you migrate from a non-Muslim country to a Muslim country. When you leave your home to another home because of Islam, you want to protect your deen. You want to protect your faith and your religion. This is ibadah. This is a kind of worship. Why? Because Mecca was not a suitable place for practicing Islam. It is very difficult. It is very difficult. How can we practice Islam? And if you remember, the, uh, when we mentioned the hadith, uh, the Prophet sallallahu uh, yani at the beginning there were seven people who were Muslims. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr, Bilal, Rabah, Suhaib, Rumi, uh, Sumayya, Ibn Khayyat, Ammar, Ibn Yasir, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and al-Maghdad, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. So Abu Bakr, the Prophet was protected by his uncle Abu Talib. Abu Bakr also was protected by his tribe. He had a strong tribe, a famous tribe. But the other people, subhanAllah, they were weak. They don't have anyone to protect them, to support them, like Ammar. Sumayyah, Suhaib, Bilal, subhanAllah. So the situation was very difficult. The situation was so, so very difficult. And that's why the scholars say, if you are in a, a non-Muslim country, then you accepted Islam. Suppose that you are, there, there is a person who is not Muslim, then he embraced Islam. And the whole community is not Muslim. So. Should he leave? We ask him, can you practice Islam? Can you pray on time? Can you do the Jumu'ah? And if she's a lady, can she, can she put the hijab? Or she cannot? If, he say, if they, these people say, Wallahi, we cannot. It is difficult to pray on time. It is difficult for me to grow the beard. Or to, for the woman to put the hijab. Or, or to celebrate the Eid. Or to pray Jumu'ah. I cannot. Then we tell him, please. You have to find another place. You have to find a Muslim country where you can practice Islam. The same situation like uh, the, for the Muslims in Mecca. It was difficult for them. If we pray, they will beat us. They tried to kill the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu more than one time. So the hijrah is ibadah. Of course, the, the term of hijrah, the term of migration, there is a general meaning for hijrah and there is a specific. Okay, the specific one is al hijrah min Makkah ila al Medina, the migration from Makkah to Medina. And this kind of hijrah stopped. There is no, now, there is no hijrah, and it is not allowed for a person to say, well, I want to migrate from Makkah to Medina. Why? Because خلاص, now Mecca is a Muslim country, alhamdulillah. It is ruled by Muslims and they can pray Jum'ah, Jama'ah, they do Tahajjud, they do Itikaf, they do Hajj. Alhamdulillah, it is a Muslim country. But it was, when it was a non-Muslim country, so there was concept of Hijrah which is from Mecca to Medina. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, لا هجرة بعد الفتح. There is no migration 
after the conquest of Mecca, which was in which year? One year more, eight year. Okay, seventh year it was Ghazwat Khaybar, the Battle of Khaybar. But in the eighth year, Mecca became a Muslim country. So after Mecca becomes a, became a Muslim country, خلاص. We, we, the Prophet ﷺ stopped the hijrah, stopped the migration. If you are in Mecca, you should stay in Mecca. Don't migrate from Mecca to Medina. So this is a specific meaning of hijrah in Islam. And there is a general meaning of hijrah. As the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالْمُهَاجِرْ مَنْ هَجَرَ مَا نَهَى اللَّهُ عَنْ Who is the person who is called Muhajir? If you avoid, if you if you leave any kind of sin, then you are muhajir. For, for example, if there is a person who's drinking khamr or stealing money of people, if he stops this sin, we call him as muhajir. Why? Because this is the general concept of hijrah. To stop sinning. If you stop the maharam, then you are muhajir. Then you are muhajir. Tayyib. During Mecca, as I mentioned, the situation was very difficult. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala decided to leave Mecca. And he left Mecca. Why? Because I, I don't have the chance to worship Allah freely. I want to pray. I want to recite Quran. I want to make that. I cannot. So he decided to leave. Tayyip. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala left Mecca. When he left Mecca, after one or two days he was walking, a man met him called Ibn al-Dighinna. Ibn al-Dighinna. He met Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was a famous man radiallahu ta'ala. So Ibn al-Dighinna met Abu Bakr. And he saw him, asked him, why you are here? Why you left Mecca? Because of business or because of what? What, what happened with you? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, أخرجني قومي وآذوني وضيق علي Abu Bakr said, I am out of Mecca because my people. They asked me to leave Mecca. And they were, uh, يعني, bothering me. So they are, they were not nice with me. So that's why I left Mecca because I want to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then Ibn Dagina said, "Why? You are a good man. You are a man." Then Ibn Dagina mentioned the same criteria like the criteria of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you remember when uh, Jibreel met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the first time, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Khadija. So Khadija mentioned four points, about four points, about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These four points, the same, the, these four points also mentioned for Abu Bakr. So there are a lot of similarities between Abu Bakr and the, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I, I, Ibn Dagina said, why? Why you left Mecca? You, usually you help people. And you do the good. And uh, يعني, you try to get the reward from poor people by helping them. No, 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 no. You should go back to Mecca. You should go back to Mecca. You will enter Mecca in my protection. There is something called al-jiwar. Okay? It is, what is the meaning of al-jiwar? Yani, it is something like, uh, yeah, for example, if you want to bring your brother, okay, how can your brother enter Kuwait? He, need, he needs visa, okay? So we ask your brother, to whom you are coming here to Kuwait? He should mention my brother, my father, صح? 
So you will ent- he will enter Kuwait because of his brother. Okay? So there, there is something the same. Now Abu Bakr, outside Mecca, they fired him. So now he cannot enter Mecca without permission, without visa, or what is called al-jubar, protection. So Ibn al said, Abu oh, Bakr, don't worry. Come to me, join me to Mecca, and I will protect you. I am your guardian. So Abu Bakr came back to Mecca with Ibn al Then Ibn al told the people of Mecca. He announced, Ya ma'ashara Quraysh, O people of Quraysh, قَدْ أَجَرْتُ إِبْنُ قَدْ أَجَرْتُ إِبْنَ أَبِي قُحَافَةِ Who is Ibn Abi Quhafa? Abu Bakr. His, father, his father's name is Abu Quhafa. Uthman. طيب. So uh, Ibn Daghina said to the people, all oh, people of Mecca, I am protecting Abu Bakr. He will enter Mecca in my protection, under my protection. So it means don't touch him. No one can ask him to leave Mecca. Except if you, if you want to do something good with him. Then Abu Bakr entered Mecca and he was safe inside Mecca. So subhanAllah, sometimes the Muslims cannot help you. Sometimes the Muslims cannot help you. But the kafir can do something good for you. Maybe the Muslims cannot pro- provide protections for you. They cannot provide food for you. Cannot provide visa for you. But you can do this through the non-Muslims. So this is darura. This is necessity. What to do? So Abu Bakr again back to Mecca. And he was very soft man. Radiallahu ta'ala an. Subhanallah. What does it mean that he's very, very so? Yeah, when he reads the Quran and the prayer, when he reads the Quran, he's very emotional. Immediately he will cry, subhanAllah. A cry, maybe if he reads Surah Al-Fatiha, he will cry. Radiallahu ta'ala an. Then, when people see Abu Bakr praying and crying, the women and the kids, come around Abu Bakr and they say, Abu Bakr, this is strange. Why he is reading something and why he is crying? He is standing alone, standing up alone and he is crying. What's the problem with this guy? So they start to ask. So if they ask, of course, they will know and they will learn about Islam. Then some people of Mecca said, "Ah, now Abu Bakr will do a lot of problems for us. Now he is attracting our women and our children. So our women and our children will ask about Islam. Then Abu Bakr will change the religion of our families. Then the people of Mecca went to Ibn al And he told him, oh, Ibn al please, we cannot touch your friend Abu Bakr. But please, you have to tell him, to stop reading the Quran. If he wants to pray, he should pray inside the house without any voice. Otherwise, we will stop him, we will beat him. We will not respect your protection. Then Ibn al went to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, and he said to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Abu Bakr, the people of Mecca fired you outside Mecca, then I brought you in my protection. And now again, they are complaining. So, please, when you pray, do pray in your home, inside your house, and don't make any sound outside. Then Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to Ibn Daghina, do you accept that I give you back your protection and I enter in the protection of Allah? 
Then Ibn Daqina said, yes, give me again my protection. Yani, cancel the visa. Okay, then Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala said, okay, I will give your protection back to you. I don't need your protection. I am in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let them do whatever they like to do with me. طيب. Then Ibn Daqina declared that to, by saying to the people of Mecca, O oh, people of Mecca, I cancelled my protection from Abu Bakr. Radiallahu ta'ala an. From, uh, radiallahu ta'ala an. So now it's up to you. Whatever, whatever you like to do with Abu Bakr, it's up to you. You want to beat him, to stop him, to kill him, this is your, your job. Khalas. It is not my job anymore. Subhanallah. So this was the situation of Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Radiallahu ta'ala an. I'll stop here. Zakum Allah khair. Wa sallillahu sallam ala Muhammad.